What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video where I'm going to do a little bit more maintenance on the IROC Z before I go ahead and start modifying anything else because a lot of you guys have noticed and I've been very clear about the exhaust being in really bad shape on the car, but in my opinion, throwing some money at buying a good cat back and a set of headers with a Y pipe, it's going to be a thousand dollars or something like that for all of it if you're going to get anything decent. I think you're putting the cart before the horse if you don't do your maintenance first. And that includes painting a car, it includes doing anything other than fixing deferred maintenance or what I might call neglect. So outside the car is warming up right now. I'm gonna pull out the Z06 and I'm gonna pull the car in here and we're gonna do another round of maintenance to the car. Today it will be a transmission service. Don't mind what's in the box here, but if you know uh, this little tag there, what these are, that's gonna be in a future video. But for now what I've got is three quarts of Dexron ATF. Now. There's a little bit of mixed information on what fluid you're supposed to use in the T5, whether it's an early T5 or a non-road class versus a world class T5. If you look around on thirdgen.org or on the internet in general, you're gonna get a really mixed review on what you should put in it. World class T5s use exclusively Dexron 3 ATF. I've read Dexron 2 as well, but in my case, I'm using Dexron 3 and 2 compatible. This stuff is fairly inexpensive. It's why I got STP. Anything that's gonna be in there is better than what was in there because right now it's pretty dark. It's not actually 5W30 or like a 90 weight or a, some cars that are earlier actually use gear oil like you would put inside of a differential. Some also use 5W30 motor oil in the transmission, believe it or not. I believe if you go back to like a T10 that would have came in a 82 to 84 Camaro for the manual transmission, you would have had a four speed. If I'm not mistaken, they use gear oil. So what I'm gonna do is pull the car in. I've got it warming up. I just went through the gears a little bit outside, trying to get the fluid sloshed around and everything covered. But what I'm gonna do now is bring the car in, get it up perfectly level on four jack stands, and I'll have plenty of room to work to drain the fluid and replace it with this new transfer pump. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. The other thing I've got for right now is an energy suspension polyurethane transmission tail shaft bushing. The bushing that's in it right now is the stock rubber one, and under power, it stabs the shifter up and down in the console really bad. So this is gonna stiffen it up quite a bit, especially considering the fact that the one that's in there right now is shot. And we're gonna have a pretty good little T5 transmission, and it's really gonna make that MGW short throw shifter feel as good as it should going through the gears on it. So enough of me rambling about it. That's kind of my two cents on it. I'll get the Corvette out of here. We'll pull the IROC in and get to work. So while I was off camera, I actually uh, was letting the transmission drain, but I was talking to some of you guys on Instagram, particularly talking to Nate on Instagram. A bunch of you have been goading me to work on this exhaust, and to be completely honest, I am so worried about snapping bolts off in here because it's all super crusty. But I finally took a look at stuff, and I finally sacked up a little bit. Off camera, I went all the way down the passenger side, and I replaced some bolts, and the bolts that I didn't have a good replacement one for, I just cleaned up and I put anti-seize on them and put them back in. So this is new, and this one's new. These have been cleaned up, that one's cleaned up. The very back one bolts through a little exhaust flange, 
So worst case scenario, if that one snaps off, it's not a big deal. I can actually pull the manifold off at that point on this side and I can re-gasket it or put a header in this side. Now for whatever reason, this side does not have a manifold adapter. This nut was not gonna back off of the bracket, so luckily the whole exhaust stud is turning out. I'll be taking off this bracket shortly here, which hopefully isn't gonna be too big of a deal with um, locating this power steering pump or anything. I don't think it will, but uh, don't quote me on that. So I'm just gonna keep working my way down to the back of this side and hopefully snug up what's there and replace bolts as I go. And even if the back one on this side is screwed up at the end, if I get a set of headers or whatever for this car and start doing the exhaust, I'll just break those two off and not care about them. Those ones are no big deal. So this actually went easier than I hoped. I know a lot of you guys or girls out there watching have probably worked on exhaust before. Some of you haven't. When it's really old and corroded, the metal will work harden. I think it's called annealing. And it gets harder and harder and harder to the point where it becomes brittle. So when they're really seized in, you gotta loosen them up. The likelihood of snapping bolts off and stuff is a real possibility. And in this garage, I have done it on a third gen Camaro of all things. So I've been down this road before and I've been losing sleep over it. But at this point, as long as I can get all the bolts out of the heads, I can start over with the whole exhaust system. That was the biggest hang up. As you can see, here's a couple of the bolts that were in the front. They've definitely seen better days, but these are actually in a lot better shape than I thought by looking at the heads. A lot of the scaling and stuff came off of them. So like I said, I have been replacing them. I do have some 3 8 by 16 thread pitch bolts that I've been replacing with and anti-seizing. So they're gonna come out super easy when it's time to do the exhaust. But I'm gonna keep going on this side while the cylinder heads are warm because the metal or the holes will have been expanded just a little bit. It's gonna be a lot easier and more importantly safer than doing it on a cold engine. So. I'm gonna keep working on this and I'll let you guys know how it goes when I'm done. guys so I left off with that little time lapse and what you didn't see on camera you know there's there's some things that you do in a car that you really just got to focus on because the probability of failure is so high and this bolt back here the very very back one right there I finally got it out with a whole bunch of WD-40 and letting it sit while I was actually doing the transmission service so every bolt on this side and on that side has been out cleaned up and reinstalled with anti-seize. So I didn't break any. That one had a very high probability of breaking. So I really took my time with that one. I let the WD-40 do its thing for like an hour. Both sides, top and bottom, I just soaked the crap out of it. Made a pretty good mess around it, but that'll all burn off pretty quick. What I did find is some of the manifold bolts were actually only finger tight as they were. I could have threaded them out with my fingers. So my fear of breaking them was founded on previous experience, but actually touching all these proved to be otherwise. So I'm all done with the transmission service. I got a heck of a mess to clean up, but for now I'm gonna start it up real quick and just see if I cleared up any leaks. I'm suspecting that they're down on the collector on this side. I may have cleared up a couple up on the engine because it did sound like there was some ticking up high too. So I'm expecting it to sound a little bit better, but I don't think it's gonna fix everything. Most importantly, now I know for sure that I'm gonna be able to get these manifolds off and I'll be able to put a set of headers on it or uh, whatever the case may be, if I'm just gonna re-gasket it and put a whole new exhaust on it, haven't decided yet. So let me know what you think I should do in the comments as far as the exhaust goes, because I am trying to keep this on a little bit of a budget and you can get into the thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollar range really quick with just exhaust, especially if you're getting something nicer. Everything's clear into the car. I'm gonna fire it up real quick, see what we got, and then we'll get into that transmission bushing mount. I'm hearing 
it's going to be way down in there. I can still hear it pretty clearly. That's got a pretty good exhaust leak, but otherwise, you can hear it better on the bottom. I think it's the collector gasket for sure. You know, as ratty as the exhaust is underneath, it's actually welded up and sealed up really good. So if I had to take a guess, I do have a leaky collector gasket. That would be the next thing I'm going to have to try and replace, or I'm going to go a whole other route with the exhaust. But I just wanted to check it. I think it sounds a little bit better, but it still has leaks, as I was expecting. But otherwise, it was a good start. Most important thing is now I know that I'm going to be able to get the whole thing apart at the head end. I can cut the exhaust up underneath it if need be. Alright, so update time. I did finally put a little bit of semi-gloss black on this transmission crossmember. Now, it's not going to be anything that anyone's going to see, but when you do all this cumulative stuff, you end up with a nice car. I probably took a pound of dirt off this thing. I cleaned it up in the parts washer, but everything that you do while you're in there, I guess, is going to make for a much better car in the end, because when I go to take this apart next time, if I do it next time or the next person does, it's going to be like brand new. So. It should come apart really easy. That thing is priceless. I've had it for years and I used the heck out of it. Under the car, I did a little bit of wire brush cleaning on the transmission and stuff. So what I've got is a whole bunch of dirt and road grime and stuff on the ground. So more of that has came off of the transmission. But what I need to do now is actually go ahead and install this new energy suspension transmission bushing. So this was a factory rubber one as far as I can tell. And if I'm not mistaken, this is actually torn right here. Uh, it would explain exactly what I've got going on. It's ripped almost all the way in half, actually. It's starting to get really weak on this side. If I had a knife, I could poke right through it. It's maybe an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch left in there, but otherwise, this thing is shot. So what I'm gonna do is toss that. I'm gonna install this without the plate, and what I'm going to do is install all the stuff loose with the bolts that I cleaned up on the wire wheel as well off camera. And hopefully when I'm all done, it's gonna line itself really well. I'll torque everything down and we're gonna have a solid driving transmission with some new fluid in it and I am prepped for exhaust work. So there's not much else to talk about right now. This is all pretty straightforward. The only tip that I've got for you is when you're installing the transmission cross member bushings is install everything loose at first before you actually tighten it all down. You'll thank me because it can be real tricky to do in the end. So as far as I can tell, I'm on the home stretch of this project. It took a lot longer because I went through and I made sure I'm going to be able to get these manifolds off like I've said 10 times now, but that was a really big step for me and uh, my confidence in going into making the exhaust better on the car because if I broke off the collectors like it appears to have been already, if it got broken or if I needed to actually get these manifold bolts off and it broke or whatever flush with the head, I've done it before, 
you end up removing cylinder heads and that is a lot of work on one of these cars when I've only got a two car garage. Something's gotta sit outside. So everything I'm doing, I'm trying to do in the matter of maybe an evening so you can park the car back outside when you're done. That's why I'm doing this all in small bits. If I had more shop space or more time, I would really rip this thing apart and do a nice job and make sure I got a really sweet driving car and uh, I guess have a really cool car when I'm all done. But I'm gonna let this thing air dry a little bit longer and hopefully in the next 20, 30 minutes, it's gonna be dry enough to handle. It's getting pretty close. So I'll see you guys back under the car. guys so I'm pretty much buttoned up with the car for tonight uh, all the stuff is a big time suck so the car doesn't look any different but I did make some mental progress on the exhaust I'm not gonna be as concerned about buying something for this car now that I know that I can actually install it if I did buy it but more importantly the point of today's video was getting all of this installed so as you can see now, the transmission cross member is the shining jewel of the car. And once again, you'll not be able to see it like many things I've installed on the Trans Am in particular. I've got the new energy suspension polyurethane mount installed in there as well. I torqued everything to 35 pound feet per my factory service manual that I have. There's a little bit of conflicting information on the internet about what to torque some of this stuff to. So sometimes I do default to my shop manual that I do have on hand at all times. But the only thing to note that was made clear with energy suspensions instructions is that the hump and you'll notice that if you buy one of these there's a hump on it is to face the rear of the vehicle so that is what i did and i think i'm ready to put the car down and go for a little bit of a test drive so hopefully it's going to drive really good and i've got high hopes for it I did end up chasing the threads on all four transmission cross member hole, bolt holes. They are metric 10 by one and a half thread pitch. I tried to chase the hardware as well, or these bolts. They should be the same thread pitch, obviously, but, but the die that I had to run down the bolts was just destroying one of them. So what I ended up doing was stopping and I just cleaned them up on the wire wheel and I threw them right back in there and I torqued them and they seem to have gone in really good after chasing the holes. It was pretty full of crud and everything, but um, anyways, that's about all I got to show you guys under the car. All in all, uh, this should really only take you maybe an hour or two to do all this stuff. If you weren't filming it, uh, it's not nearly as involved as trying to set up the camera and everything. And I spent pretty much all night working on the car, including the exhaust up on top. But I have made quite a bit of progress, so I think it was worth it. I guess that's about all I've got to say about it right now. It's kind of late, but I am going to go for a little drive in it just to see how it feels. And then tomorrow, we'll go do a drive together, and I'll tell you what I think about all this stuff. So... I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right guys, so it is the next day and I had some more failure on the car. I'd actually read online before I bought the transmission bushing mount from Energy Suspension that the preload plate on it can in some vehicles cause a vibration after you install it. And but what I mean by that is when people take the preload plate out, you've altered your pinion angle or driveline angle on the car and the vibration goes away on some cars. It seems to be from car to car and they're not all the same but I picked up a vibration with that new mount because that's really all that changed. It can't be the fluid. Uh, I didn't really do anything else underneath the car other than install the new bushing. So what I'm going to do is take the plate out from under the car and hopefully it's going to take care of the vibration. If not, I may just switch back to a factory replacement rubber mount, which is another common fix to that. They're going to absorb a lot more vibration from the driveline than a polyurethane one will. So. There's one of two things that happened. My driveline angle is now wrong, the pinion angle I guess you'd call it, or I'm now for the first time noticing that my drive shaft is crazy out of balance or something like that. It's actually transmitting things into the car that the old rubber torn one wasn't because that one was almost severed. So I probably missed a lot of it in the first place. I expected to pick up some vibration, but this is kind of annoying. I didn't film it last night and usually I like to go drive stuff a little bit before I waste time filming and uh, you know, it's just more dead footage. The other thing that happened when I took this power steering pump bracket apart, I put it back together but I'm out of adjustment on it and what I've got 
is about doing this. And this thing squeals to beat the band. So what I need to do is get a shorter one. I'll get a new alternator belt while I'm at it. And I think after that, I should be good to go. So first things first, I gotta quiet this thing down so I can actually drive it in peace and have the power steering pump actually work. Because last night, it was terrible. I uh, guess that's about all I gotta say about it. We're on day two of this project and hopefully it's the last day. That was a quick repair. Uh, what you didn't see off camera was that I think I stripped out the alternator retaining hole up here. It's actually threaded in the alternator housing. I stripped it out and it actually ended up being loose and the alternator belt came loose. You heard that noise. I could see it wasn't charging. So what I did was just throw a 5 16th nut and bolt through it. It's nice and tight now and it shouldn't go anywhere. So we will take two. rigid spot for any vibration you have on other worn out bushings or out of balance parts and pieces to actually transmit into the car. Just a little bit better for each gear. So, like I've said before, 
I don't think you should expect a world of difference doing any one thing, but the culmination of doing all these things is what's going to make the car better. So overall, the car does drive really good. I did pick up a little bit of a vibration, which I expected. So if that's the worst thing that happens through all this, I'd call this all good work. It drops into gear a lot better going into first. Alright guys, so we are back from our test drive and the car drives pretty good. The only difference is exactly what I expected. I am feeling a little bit more vibration in the car with that stiffer transmission bushing. Now, if that's something that you don't want, I'd recommend you just get a replacement rubber one. They're going to have maybe a shorter lifespan if you're going to drive it hard, but if you're just going to cruise the car around and you're not going to drive it at all and you don't want things super stiff, I'd probably recommend just getting an OEM type replacement rubber one. But in my case, I'm trying to make a car very driver oriented and for not a ton of money and this is one way you can stiffen things up and get all the feedback you're possibly going to get from the car. Not only that, it's going to keep the transmission firmly in place and what should really happen is the engine should be held firmly in place too with a couple of fresh motor mounts. But that's not going to be in this video and neither will the exhaust, much to the dismay of many people watching. Trust me, it's good. Gonna... I've got a heck of a mess to clean up behind me. I've got some parts to throw away. I've got parts on the shelf for the car. Like I teased in the beginning of the video, here's some stuff that you'll see on Instagram. If you're not actually on there yet, you might want to check it out because you get lots of sneak peeks of stuff that I've got for it. Check it out at Greenlight Filming. If you have any input on F-bodies or questions about F-bodies, I get questions on occasion on Instagram or in the comments here. Make sure you check out F-body Forum. It's at F-body Forum on Instagram. Give it a like. If you want to, you can send me a message on there if you have any troubleshooting issues with your 82 to 2002 F-body. And what I will do is repost it with a photo of your car for the group to answer. I'm trying to bring the forum template to Instagram. So that's all I got for today's video. Give it a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already or share this video with a friend if you think they might benefit from having some of the tips and tricks that I'm trying to share with you guys. Or if you just think they might enjoy watching the build series. But until next time, we'll see you guys in the next one.